we're back in module 10. This is the second video, so it's video 10B, and we're covering pages 324 to 329. We're talking about acids and bases. And now I'm gonna give you some notes on da -da -da -da, how to determine which reactant is the acid or the base. We already did a little bit of this together in our last video, but here are some rules that you can write down and some steps to follow. Number one, split any ionic compounds up into ions. Why? Because when ionic compounds dissolve in water, they split into their ions. For example, NaCl, table salt, in water will actually be present not as the NaC molecule, but as Na plus and Cl negative. So splitting up those ions is gonna help you determine what's the acid, what's the base, and you will see why when we do some examples. Secondly, the molecule or ion that gained the H plus is the base, because we know that the H plus acceptor or the proton acceptor is the base. Number three, the molecule that donated or lost H plus is the acid because the H plus donor or proton donor is an acid. Let's try one, shall we? Let's do example 10.1 in your book. Okay, example 10.1 asks us to determine which is the acid which is the base in the following reaction. H2SO4, and these are all aqueous, the little AQ in the parentheses, they're all dissolved in water, so I'm just gonna leave the AQ off. H2SO4 plus CaCO3 yields Ca2 plus plus HCO3 minus plus HSO4 minus. All right, that's written out in your book on page 325. So here's our example. All right, now if we look at our periodic table, we can see that um, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen are all nonmetals, so this must be a covalent compound. However, calcium is to the left of the jagged line on our beloved table, so that would make it a metal. CO3 negative, um, those are nonmetals, carbon and oxygen, so this one would be ionic. So our first step tells us to split any ionic compounds up into ions. So we're gonna read it, write it below like this. H2SO4 plus, if we split this up into ions, calcium has a, what kind of charge does it have? It is in the second column, column number two. So it has a two plus charge. Ca2 plus plus CO3 to negative, which you should have memorized or become familiar with in the last mod module. This is known as the carbonate ion, CO3 two minus. Okay. Um, so we split those up into their different ions, and then the right side of our equation stays the same. So we can just copy that down. Ca2 plus plus HCO3 minus plus HSO4 minus. Now we can take a look and see what happens in the equation. Okay, the HSO, H2SO4 changed and became this ion with only one hydrogen and then the SO4 minus. So this donated an H plus. Donated H plus. And we can read up here the molecule or ion that, ugh, number three, 
the molecule that donated the H plus is the acid. So H2SO4 was the acid in this reaction. And we can see here that the CO3 2 minus became HCO3 minus, so it gained an H plus ion. Gained or accepted H plus, making it, according to rule number two, the base. Okay, now what is the base? Is it just the CO3 2 minus? Well, it's actually the molecule that it started from, which is right here. So the base equals CaCO3 is was the base, because you have to look at what actually started in the reaction. Okay, the compound from which it came was CaCO3, which is the base. All right, let's try another example. So this is also from example 10.1. And the next one is HCl plus NaOH yields H2O and NaCl. All right, so let's go through this. Um, hydrogen and chlorine are nonmetals, so this is covalent. Sodium, however, is a metal, right? Yes, it's in column number one. Sodium is a metal. These are non-metals, so this is ionic. So we're going to need to split those into their different ions. Um, same over here. We're going to split this ionic compound. I think I told you before that for the products, you didn't have to split it up. I'm sorry, that's wrong. We need to split it up. Okay, so we're going to, this is also ionic. So we're going to split those into their its ions as well. So let's rewrite it. So we've got HCl plus Na as a one plus charge plus OH minus, because I know the hydroxide ion has a one minus charge, yields H2O plus Na plus plus Cl minus. All right, now we can take a look at who gained or lost H+. Um, we can see that for our chlorine, HCl goes from this compound to Cl-. So this donated H+. And who donates H+, that's right, acids do. So HCl is the acid, and then over here, we can see that the OH minus is what gained the H plus ion, because it went from OH minus to H2O, so it gained one hydrogen, or accepted one hydrogen. So the compound that the OH minus came from is going to be the base. So NaOH equals the base. All right. Now, sometimes in an equation, you're going to have ions that don't seem to do anything at all. Like, for example, in this uh, reaction, the Na plus, at the end of the reaction, there's still just Na plus floating around in this beaker of solution, okay? We call these ions spectator ions, and you can see why. Spectator ions are kind of like, they should have named them wallflower ions, that would have been fun. Spectator ions are ions that do not participate in 
the reaction. So in the two examples that we just did, we saw uh, Ca2 plus and Na plus in the above examples were both spectator ions. Okay, an easy way, that always sounds good, doesn't it? Something easy. Easy way to identify acids or bases. Most acids have hydrogen as their first atom. Okay, so for example, if we have HF or we have a compound CH4, which would be an acid typically? HF, because most acids have H as the first acid, as the first atom, not as the last atom. That doesn't necessarily tell us anything. But when we see H as the first atom, it's usually going to be an acid. Okay, not always, but usually. That's why this is not like a tried and true method. It's just an easy way to usually see what's going to be the acid. And alternatively, most bases contain the hydroxide ion. Remember what that is? That's right, it is OH negative. Okay, so for example, rubinium hydroxide, or say we have CH3OH. Okay, Rb is a metal, which makes this an ionic compound, and so this would get separated into two, into ions, and you'd have you would see you'd have the hydroxide ion OH negative. So this would be a base. Over here, there's no metal. There's no metal. It's not ionic. There's no hydroxide ion. There's no ions in a covalent molecule, and this is covalent. So this would not necessarily be a base. This would be a base. Um, there is an exception for, the, for bases. There is one common base that does not contain the hydroxide ion. A common base is... NH3, that's ammonia, known as ammonia. NH3 is a base, okay? And also see table 10.1 for a list of common acids. Good news, no, you do not need to memorize them but you can add into your notes that there is this table of common acids and you can start to familiarize yourself with them so that they stand out to you as you're doing these acid and base um, problems. All right, that's it for this notes video. I will see you next time.